Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Quick Shot Answers number four. So in this video, I'm going to answer another four questions that you've sent in. Let's get going. Question number one comes from Steve and Steve says, I've just watched your tree cutting time lapse video. I have a Canon, but I've never attempted time lapse before. Would you be able to add some comments about making a time lapse? Um, yeah, why not, Steve? First of all, if you've got a Canon, if it's a digital SLR, you're not going to be able to do time lapse with that as it comes out of the bag. Isn't that right, Jake? Hmm. So instead, you're going to need to do something else. Two choices. First of all, how on earth did you find my tree time lapse video? Unbelievable. I don't think anyone else has seen that. It's you and me, Steve. Um, but I shot it on this. This is a little compact camera. It is a Ricoh R2 and it's, it's pretty ancient. I got it for about 20 quid off of eBay second hand and I only bought it because it does an interval timer option which means it takes a picture every three seconds or five seconds or ten seconds. Brilliant, very very good. Um, if you get more into time lapse work and time lapse by the way is a series of still images that you take over a period of time, join them together and make a little movie. If you get more into it, get one of these. This is an interval timer which plugs into the uh, remote socket on your camera and you can set this thing to run at any combination of seconds, minutes, hours, whatever and take a sequence of pictures. This one is uh, by Photix but you'll find camera manufacturers will also make their own if you want to use the camera own one and uh, that really makes time lapse a lot easier. Okay, so next question. Um, question number two comes from Carlos Andreas Rivera. And Carlos, you ask, uh, Hi, I see your pictures have high contrast. Did you edit them or are they showing it just like your camera captured them? <laughs> uh, no, no, Carlos, no, my, cap my camera did not capture the pictures. Well, it did, but it, they didn't look like that. Um, I am raw to the core, okay? So that means I shoot all my pictures in raw and I process them in Photoshop. The raw images have very low contrast, very low color, because none of that kind of stuff that gets applied to a JPEG in camera is applied to your raw. That's what you have to do with the software. Now, whilst I'm doing it, hey, I, I like contrast, so I'll push up the clarity, the contrast, and the blacks. I, can't, I kind of call it grunging my image. I don't do it to every picture, but I do do it quite a lot. Okay, so uh, next question comes from Stefan, and Stefan says, Hello Gavin, greetings from Romania. Hello Romania! Um, Gavin, please explain to me how you do those panoramic pictures of Winchester Cathedral, and do you shoot raw? Please, yes of course I shoot raw. I own, all to the core, I only shoot raw. Um, how does it work? Well, you're going to need a camera first of all, aren't you? Let me, let me go and get a camera, hang on. A lens, let's just uh, attach the two together. I recommend having your camera set up before you take your panoramics. Um, with a panoramic, you're going to take a sequence of individual pictures and then stitch them together. Now what you want is the exposure to be more or less the same all the way across. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you want it to be correctly exposed uh, here and here and in the middle, but what you, what you want is the pictures to have an uh, a generic exposure all the way across so they blend seamlessly together. Now to achieve that I take a meter reading from the middle of my image. So I'll put my camera on aperture priority, AV mode and I'll choose my aperture because I'll be choosing my depth of field that way uh, f5.6 for example and I'll take a reading which is 50th of a second. So 50th of a second f5.6 switch to manual put those in turn my camera on its side to take my pictures in portrait format because you get a deeper panorama that way and then take a sequence of pictures all at a 50th of a second f5.6 or whatever your meter reading is. That way they all have the same exposure all the way across and when they stitch together they stitch together beautifully without any sudden changes of exposure. Good, okay. Um, have we got to the last question? No, there's one more, one more to go. Last question comes from Harry Young and Harry says, I'm a student photographer, I'm looking to get into theatre and theatre production photography, I have a Canon 1000D, what lens would you recommend for theatres and plays? You haven't said how much, Harry. <laughs> so, um, money no object, 
money no object, get yourself one of these. Uh, this is a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. It's the f 2.8 bit that you want and the image stabilization. And then also get yourself a 24 to 70, which I don't have with me, a 24 to 70 f 2.8. Those are my magic lenses for low light conditions because that 2.8 aperture lets a load of light in, gives a nice fast shutter speed. That's what you're going to need. Okay, now let's assume you can't afford £3,000 for lenses. In that case, you're going to need something like this. It's a little bit more humble, isn't it? This is the um, Canon f1.8 50mm lens. It's cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. This is about £100, something like that. But that f1.8 aperture, that's a big aperture. A lot of light coming through, so when you're in low light conditions, you're going to get a reasonably good shutter speed and freeze the action. And it's cheap. Every photographer should have one of these in their camera bag somewhere. So there you go, Harry. That's what you need. You need a 50mm f1.8 or a lot of money to buy a good range of f2.8 lenses. So there we are, that's another four quick shot questions answered, done, dusted and finished. If you've got a question of your own, you know my website by now, www.gavtrain.com. Fill in the form, send it back to me and it could be your question that I'm answering right here in my very next video. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching.